Hello fellow readers, thanks for being here. Our positive quote of the day is, you're off to great places, today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Big thanks to Dr. Seuss for that. Let's get started with the stories. Am I the unreasonable one for telling my wife that I blame her for the fact my mom won't visit? My mother decided she doesn't want to visit us for the foreseeable future. We live in an area where there are no hotels and the closest hotel is about an hour drive. My wife is very rigid about the house rules. We are vegan and my mom is fine eating vegetarian if she visits, but can't deal with the veganism. My wife won't compromise at all, won't let her buy her own food, or have dairy in the house at all. My mom makes excuses to go out and I know she is going to eat out of the house. And then my wife gets offended and acts like my mom is a horrible guest. If my mom doesn't sneak out to eat she ends up pale and dizzy and my wife thinks she is throwing a fit. My wife also doesn't cook, so we eat a lot of frozen meat substitutes and my mom refuses to eat them because she thinks they are gross and loaded with sodium. They are, so my mom eats like lettuce and rice and then my wife doesn't believe her when she feels weak and dizzy. She tries to control what my mom can wear. My mom lives a very different lifestyle than us. She is much more career driven and materialistic but she doesn't criticize us. My wife literally asked my mom not to carry a Louis Vuitton bag in front of the kids because she doesn't like the message it sends. She criticizes my mom for putting makeup on, and my personal favorite, she went in my mom's room while she was sleeping, not on purpose, but our two-year-old ran in because the lock doesn't work and she had to grab him, and criticized my mom for sleeping in a sports bra. She fought with my mom about if my mom has body issues and wouldn't listen to her explanation that she has implants and the bra helps with alignment or something. The last straw was when my mom came with her fiancé. My wife implied they have a sad relationship because my mom has a diamond ring and if they really loved each other she wouldn't need a diamond. She treated the guy like a creep and got mad because he was left alone in the living room with the kids literally for the three minutes it took my mom to go to the bathroom. He isn't creepy or abusive or anything. I forget what it is called, but my mom's fiancé has some issue that causes vertigo and has to eat low sodium. My mom said they were going out to dinner because the only food we have would make him sick. My wife told my mom she was being rude and that they better not go out to dinner. Well they took their stuff and left. My mom says I'm welcome to visit her, but she isn't coming to our house for a while. I told my wife that I blame her and she said I had no right to say that, and I should put our nuclear family before my mom. Not the unreasonable one. You need to stand up to your wife because her behavior is unacceptable. She sounds toxic and controlling. Not the unreasonable one holy crap. Your wife sounds like an actual, living freaking nightmare. And BTW, she's killing you all slowly with her disgusting frozen fake meat flavored sodium sticks. I know this is a typical trope here, but I would really think twice about this marriage. She sounds extremely controlling and rude, like it's literally her way or the highway all the time, over everything. And while yes, your wife and children are supposed to be your priority, I'm pretty sure you didn't vow to blindly do whatever your wife wants at the expense of every other relationship you have. You guys sound isolated. My suggestion is to get away from her for a few days, by yourself or with the kids. Go take your mom up on her offer, or go visit a cousin, a sibling, a friend from the past. Hell, even just book a cabin by the beach somewhere and get some distance to really think about your relationship. Not the unreasonable one, but this is a lot of red flags coming from your wife. Has she been to therapy? Does she do any of these things to you or the children? Am I the unreasonable one for standing up to my GF's sister after kissing? Throw away egg. I, 20 years old female, was at my girlfriend's, 21 years old female, parents house to celebrate her birthday. There were only 13 people there, including us. For info, we started dating two years ago and moved in this year. Before COVID, I was her first GF, and part of the reason she came out to her family. She told me that they were fine with it and invited me over for dinners. I went to multiple of those dinners, but we avoided doing anything intimate in case it made them uncomfortable. Anyways, we got there yesterday and quickly went outside to see her siblings, parents and niece plus nephews. When we sat down, my GF rested her head on my shoulder and I noticed her siblings fidgeting and staring at the both of us. After an hour, I started to overhear comments about how disgusting it was to see us hugging and holding hands. I was getting pissed and my GF noticed so she pulled me to the kitchen for privacy. She told me not to say anything which I agreed to. She gave me a quick kiss as a thank you and niece must have walked in because we could hear her giggling. When we saw her, we both quickly stopped and she ran up to my GF for a quick hug. I quickly went back outside. My GF's sister and older brother soon walked outside and approached so that we could chat. It started out rather civilized, 
them saying that we should refrain from kissing each other while in public and my kindly retort of nah, we're dating and I like being able to show that. They tried to say something else, but someone shouted cakes ready and I jumped out of the pool before anything else was said. We sang happy birthday and my GF blew out the candles before giving me another kiss. Her sister starting yelling that her daughter was here and she didn't need anyone converting her to sin. I instantly said that there is nothing wrong about two women kissing. She was flabbergasted and said that according to the Bible, it was wrong and we were going to hell. So I responded with what verse says that. My girlfriend stood up and grabbed my hand to squeeze it, a method we have for when one of us was uncomfortable, and I shut up, but her sister continued to rage about how wrong it was. I was half expecting her older brother to join in, but he just looked embarrassed. After 5 minutes she got quiet and her daughter started tugging on her skirt while crying. Instantly her mom said that it was our kissing which caused her to cry, but GF's younger brother's girlfriend just shouted that it was her yelling not our kissing which made her upset. Her sister left immediately with her husband and daughter. The rest of the night was really awkward. As we were driving home my GF thanked me for saying something. But when we got home she tried to call her sister, only for her sister to answer and yell for her to F off before ending the call. I feel like complete crap for ruining their relationship even though my GF says that it was the right thing to do. Am I the unreasonable one? Not the unreasonable one, you didn't ruin their relationship, her sister did. It sounds like you stood up for yourself and also managed to respect your girlfriend's boundaries when she squeezed your hand. Dealing with families who aren't fully accepting can be really hard, and unfortunately it sounds like this was going to happen at some point and you handled as well as you could. Not the unreasonable one, funny how your GF sister chooses to whip out the gay as a sin card, but is super quick to ignore judge not lest ye be judged. Not the unreasonable one, you didn't ruin their relationship, the sister did that all by herself. Am I the unreasonable one for moving out when my parents had another child? My, F22, parents had a late in life daughter last year. I have three other siblings besides, M27, F24, and, M14. I had been living rent free with my parents up until last year in order to save money while I completed my undergraduate degree which my parents paid for. They also told me they would let me live with them through grad school even though they wouldn't pay for it. My parents are financially well off, and my mom has always been a stay-at-home mother. Last year when my mom found out she was pregnant, they told me they expected me to step up and help out with the baby and take on more housework. I already did a good chunk of the housework prior to this. My parents have done a lot for me, genuinely. They were pretty good parents, and are good people. I just really did not want to get roped into a role as caregiver or even be shoved into the big sister role again. So I moved out maybe a month later and this is verbatim what I said to them when I moved out, I appreciate everything you guys have done for me, but I feel that you're asking too much. I can't live with you and be subject to your rules indefinitely. At some point I have to move out and live my own life. So anyway, I moved out and got a place with my fiancé. My parents were very upset with me, and we haven't spoken much at all since I moved out. I've been sending a bi-monthly check to pay back the money they spent on my tuition. Since I've always felt a little guilty letting them pay for it, even before I moved out. I'm honestly okay with this new situation, since my parents have always been a little overbearing. But my older sister recently told me that I'm selfish and ungrateful, and I should apologize to my parents and help them with childcare etc. I am not going to do that, and I'm not entirely convinced I did anything wrong. Am I the unreasonable one? Also, for people asking if my siblings are helping, my older brother, 27, lives with them, but because of mental health issues, depression, I think, they have never expected anything of him. My younger brother was the baby for 14 years and is honestly pretty spoiled so I know he's not doing anything. My sister isn't living with them, but she is probably helping out if they need anything. Their anger is more based on principle rather than actually needing help since they are very financially well off. Edit 2, a lot of people are asking if my parents paid for my siblings' educations and the answer is no. My older brother and sister both got full scholarships to college. Although my brother didn't graduate due to mental health issues, I went to an expensive private university with only a partial scholarship, and my mother was vocally against this, as she wanted me to go to a state school since I didn't get any full rides. They would never ask me to pay them back, but my mother in particular has always made me feel a bit guilty for spending so much money. I'm not sure if she was intentionally guilt tripping. Edit 3, sorry for the confusion on the timeline. The baby is already born but I did move out before she was born, and I got engaged after I moved out. Edit 4, I said in a comment that I wouldn't say where my parents immigrated from, but there's no chance they'll see this anyway. Oh, it's Mexico, if that gives any context. Say it with me, 
Children don't owe their parents anything for raising them. Should you be appreciated for parents that raised you well? Absolutely, but that's literally their job they chose to take on when they chose to have kids. And they are once again choosing to have another child and go through the whole raising process again. You did not get to choose whether you wanted to be a caregiver to this child and are in no way in awe because you don't want to be one. Not the unreasonable one. Not the unreasonable one. You did the responsible thing for your mental health and you're even doing more than expected by them with your tuition. Plus, you're engaged. They couldn't have expected you to stay forever. Congrats on the upcoming marriage and your newfound freedom. Not the unreasonable one. Tell your older sister she should go be mommy number two to the baby. Am I the unreasonable one for telling my husband he should have just married a white woman? For context I'm a black woman and my husband is white. I have 4C hair and I wrap my hair in a satin scarf to go to bed. For those of you who don't know what that means, basically my hair curl pattern is really tightly coiled so my hair texture is kinky and easily tangled and easily breakable if not taken care of well. I used to sleep on a satin pillowcase when my hair was shorter and had a lower chance of tangling while I tossed and turned in my sleep. But recently I've added oils to my nightly routine and since my hair is a bit past my shoulders now, the chances of a tangling are higher and I don't want my pillowcases to get soaked with oils so I started wrapping my hair up again. First night I wore it my husband said that I looked like a slave which okay was a little bit funny and a little bit true in my scarf and nightgown combo so I let him have that one. But since then, it's the little comments when I get into bed. Like are we doing the slave tonight? Or should I help you into bed grandma? Little things like that. I've explained why I'll do it, and I think he understands that but he simply doesn't like it and my hope was that he'd get used to it by now. Last night I was getting ready for bed and I couldn't find my scarf anywhere so I asked dear husband if he'd seen it and he admitted that they hid it, but wouldn't tell me where. He wouldn't stop joking around even when I got visibly upset and said he wished he could run his fingers through my hair or something along those lines and I snapped and said if he wanted that he should have married a white woman. He got really quiet after that and told me where he hid it. We haven't talked much about it. But there's this air of awkwardness. The only times he mentioned it was this morning when he said that we should look into counseling for our race issues and that I made him feel really racist and I didn't think about it that way. I thought he was upset because I yelled at him, but I didn't think it was the statement itself. Granted I probably should not have brought race into it, but I wanted to illustrate a point. Now he's suggesting couples counseling to get through our race issues? I don't think it was that serious and I don't want to go through all that. Am I the unreasonable one? Not the unreasonable one saying your black wife looks like a slave is freaking weird and racist. Trying to control how you style your hair is weird. Being so bothered by a headscarf is weird. I think he's the only one with race issues that he's projecting onto you. Not the unreasonable one. You made him feel racist because he was being racist. It was really mean of him to make those comments and hide your scarf. I think you should go to counseling if only to have a third party tell him how wrong he was for doing that to you. Wait so he said are we doing slave tonight? But you made him feel like a racist? Go ahead and call the race therapist ASAP. Also, you need backup scarves sis. I have like four. Hide my crap. Try me smile. Am I the unreasonable one for refusing to split my college funds with my stepsister? My mom passed away when I was 10. My parents were already divorced at this point, so I was the sole beneficiary of her estate. So I have a trust fund which my granddad manages for me until I turn 25. I'm currently 18. As a part of the trust, my mother left me behind some money to pay for college which I will be getting access to soon. My dad remarried my stepmother shortly after his divorce with my mother and she has two daughters, Hannah, 16 and Emma, 18. Since my mom passed, I've been living with my dad full time and spent school holidays with my grandparents. For the first few years, things were okay, but then my stepsisters started to complain about my time with my grandparents because they took me and my cousins on fancy international trips and they were jealous, and my dad started trying to force me to limit contact with them. My grandparents ended up threatening to sue my dad for grandparents' rights so he stopped. Instead he started refusing to give me permission to fly abroad and wouldn't let me keep all of the gifts my grandparents bought me. Recently, my dad and stepmom sat me and Emma down and informed us that they wouldn't be able to help us with college because they'd run into some financial trouble a few years ago and had to use the money to keep us afloat. Emma was devastated and when I didn't have the same reaction, my dad asked me why I wasn't upset. I explained that I still have the money mom left me, that my grandparents also had a separate college fund for me and that my aunts and uncle, mom's siblings, also had smaller college funds for me. My aunt on my dad's side also gave me $5,000 as a high school graduation gift slash money for college so I should be able to complete my degree without needing to get any loans as long as I work part-time too. 
My dad already knew about the money my mom left me, but he had no idea about the rest. Emma and my stepmom started insisting I had to share the college funds with Emma, otherwise it wouldn't be fair. I refused. This is my mom's family's money so I don't think I should share with someone who isn't even related to them. My stepmom started screaming at me and calling me ungrateful for all of the things she's done for me and that she was going to sue me for all of the money she spent on me growing up. My dad got angry with her and told her to stop and now they're not speaking to each other. He said he's happy that I'll be able to go to college without any debts, but if I would please consider giving her at least one of the smaller funds. Since then, Emma and Hannah have been horrible to me. My stepmom keeps forcing me to do all of Emma's chores and Hannah said if our parents divorce it'll be all of my fault for being a greed bitch. Am I the unreasonable one? Not the unreasonable one, tell yourself grandparents what's happening, can you go live with them? I'd get out of the house, they will continue to treat you like crap. Not the unreasonable one. Now that you are 18 you should consider going to live with your mom's relatives to get away from your stepmom. Absolutely not the unreasonable one. It's your money from your family, and you should keep it to go to college like you planned. On a side note, some of your life sounds sorta like Cinderella. Am I the unreasonable one for ruining my friend's engagement? A few weeks ago, I, 26 years old female, went to Portland, Maine with my boyfriend. I had never been and only lived two hours away. So he thought it'd be a nice weekend trip for us. We had a great time exploring the city eating out and what's important to this story, visiting the lighthouses. While there, I posted on my Instagram a photo he snapped of me in front of one of the lighthouses he took me to. Now, for the past few months I've been helping my friend, 26 years old female s boyfriend, 28 years old male, get ready to propose, usual friends duties like sending him styles she expressed interest in, finding her ring size, proposal plans, etc. After he got the ring, he told me that he came up with a plan to propose during their yearly trip to Maine by renting an Airbnb and proposing in the room so she wouldn't be the center of attention, which would be happening in a month or so. I told him that sounds great. So, fast forward and they go to Portland, Maine this past week and he proposes to her in front of the same lighthouse I had posted a picture at in the weeks prior. Super happy for them. I send my congratulations to both and that's when things start to get weird. I hadn't heard back from them after sending a couple texts and trying to call which I thought was weird having helped plan this, but figured they were newly engaged and enjoying this moment. It's now two days after, still no word from either and then I finally receive a text message from him saying, Hey, thanks for the congratulations and help with the ring. However, I'm bummed you went to, the lighthouse, weeks before and posted a picture at it, intentional or not. It took away from something special I had planned and told you about. To say I was confused is an understatement. I responded with a question mark and he explained that by me going to the spot he was proposing at weeks before and posting a picture there, he felt betrayed and I ruined their special moment. In addition to his message, I reached out to my friend to ask what was going on and why I was also now blocked on Instagram, to which she responded completely berating me, swearing at me, telling me I ruined her proposal and made her and her fiancé feel betrayed embarrassed and screwed over. She told me the first words out of his mouth after he proposed were that this was supposed to be special and, I, took that away from them. They're demanding me that I apologize and told me that I'm banned from their future wedding. I responded to this with my thoughts that a social media post from weeks ago shouldn't have any influence on their proposal and that an apology is not in the cards. I did not argue nor did I feel the need to because I don't think I did anything wrong. I even sent back the screenshot of the original proposal plan he sent me saying he was getting an Airbnb and proposing in the room. So, am I the unreasonable one for going to Portland and posting a picture there before he proposed? Edit 1. I did send the screenshot of the proposal plan he sent me to both of them. They still want an apology. Update. Thanks for the feedback everyone. When I wrote this post, I wasn't sure if I should be the one to apologize or not and if I did anything wrong. This isn't the first time something like this has happened, just the most extreme which makes me think it won't also be the last. After hearing about other similar experiences and assurance that I'm not the unreasonable one, I'll be moving on from this friendship. Not the unreasonable one. Seriously? Do they own Portland? So self-centered. Not the unreasonable one. Wouldn't be surprised if he saw your pictures and changed plans last minute cause he liked that location better. Super sad though that they can easily quit a friendship over this. You're probably better off without them. Not the unreasonable one. There are people before you that already took pictures of the exact same lighthouse. 
subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more stories delivered to you. Thanks for listening. See you later.